Welcome to the video guys, the carbonated chicken is not very happy, in fact I've seen less salt in the Dead Sea than is currently flowing out of this toss pot and the rabid band of lunatics that religiously follow Magic Grandpa like he is their lord and saviour. It's almost as cringy as NHS nurses dancing on TikTok, but when Corbin gets salty you know I am there to rub some of that salt in the wounds and gloat because salt mining is a hobby of mine as you all know. Well this salt mining session has the added bonus of getting to mock the UK's number one cuck, not Lord Burke whose own cousin was belt feeding his wife a large side of pork sword in their marital home while poor little Burkirk sits in his Westminster apartment sponging off the taxpayer. All of this before he decided to betray the British people with the low-life antics in Parliament that nearly stopped Brexit altogether. We are obviously talking about Jeremy Corbyn's nominations for peerages, which as you all know, I do not agree with since I would like the House of Lowlifes to be abolished immediately. Well, as you all know by now, every single one of his nominations got rejected, which included John Burkirk that has got the carbonated chicken pretty salty like I said and even going as far as to complain to the elevation committee not only because he did not get his own way but because Labour MPs he did not like got elevated into the House of Lords because obviously the British public bitch slapping him last December wasn't enough humiliation for this septic spot on the arse of humanity. The Elevation Committee had to add to that and we will continue that theme with this video here. Now, both stories we're going to look at are in the Express and the first headlines. Jeremy Corbyn launches official complaint after House of Lords snub leaves him humiliated. Which I have to say, when I saw this article last night, I did have a little smile on my face because it is always great news to see. Jeremy Corbyn has lodged an official complaint with parliamentary officials after his nominations for peerages were overlooked while former Labour MPs who rebelled against these leaders leadership were given seats in the House of Lords. Mr Corbyn is understood to have been particularly enraged by the rejection of a peerage for former Labour official and close ally Carrie Murphy, whom he had wanted to install in the House of Lords to work on trade union rights. Miss Murphy was one of the most powerful figures inside Labour under Mr Corbyn's leadership and insiders believe her nomination was blocked as a result of an Equality and Human Rights Commission investigation into the party's handling of alleged anti-Semitism. She obviously denies any wrongdoing. The former Labour leader also nominated ex-speaker John Burko and former deputy leader Tom Watson and both were turned down by the Independent House of Lloyd's Appointment Commission, which I'm sure had many of you actually smiling at the time like it did me. A Downing Street spokesman made clear vetting was a matter for the Independent Commission. He said there is no automatic entitlement to a peerage for any holder of high office. But while Mr Corbyn's picks for peerages were rejected, a series of his most prominent critics were cleared to join the second chamber, with Frank Field, John Woodcock, Ian Austin, Gisela Stewart and Kate Hoey, all former Labour MPs who had opposed their former leader, being elevated to the House of Lords. Miss Stewart was a vocal opponent of Mr Corbyn in the run-up to the 2016 Brexit referendum as a co-chair of the Vote Leave campaign. Miss Hoey was one of the most prominent Eurosceptic voices in the party ranks and a member of the Labour Leave group as was Mr Field. Which, I have got to say, it is good to have Brexiteers in the House of Lords, but obviously I don't agree with the House of Lords in the slightest, and also something else needs to be pointed out. Why didn't Nigel Farage get stuck in there if you're going to stick Hoey and everyone else in there? Miss Stewart was a vocal opponent of Mr Corbyn in the run-up to the 2016 Brexit referendum as a co-chair of the Vote Leave campaign. Miss Hoey was one of the most prominent Eurosceptic voices in the party's ranks and a member of the Labour Leave group, as was Mr Field. Mr Rostin became a firm supporter of honouring the 2016 referendum result after Leave won despite Mr Corbyn backing another vote. Mr Woodcock, who had the Labour whip withdrawn after a sexual harassment allegation which he denied, differs in that he never backed Brexit and supported a second referendum. But the former Shadow Minister was on the same page as the rest of the group in his dislike of Mr Corbyn, as was probably 90 odd percent of the country, let's be honest. Most Labour voters really didn't vote for the Corbynated chicken, they voted for the political party that they have always voted for. Both he and Mr Austin went as far as urging voters to support Boris Johnson and vote Tory to stop the then Labour leader from becoming Prime Minister because obviously even though Boris Johnson is a bit of a shit show, could you imagine the carbonated chicken leading us now? That would be a nightmare beyond all reckoning and I would probably be in the gulag along with a lot of others on YouTube, including many of you guys watching this video I would expect. Mr Austin, a former Labour minister, urged decent traditional patriotic Labour voters to back the Conservatives because 
because obviously Labour are about as patriotic as the Liberal Democrats. Mr Woodcock said he would vote Tory to stop Mr Corbyn getting his hands on the levers of national security and defence. Now obviously, like I said, the sort continued into a second article and this time Alistair Campbell joined in with the headline Corbyn humiliated as Labour peers chosen for contribution to toppling ex-leader. Which, in all honesty, is a worthwhile reason to be chosen, I would expect. Let's be honest, getting rid of the Corbynated chicken is the best thing for this country at the end of the day. Former Labour MPs that have been put forward by Boris Johnson for a peerage are not nominated because of their personal political record, but more for their opposition to their own party leader, Jeremy Corbyn, according to Alistair Campbell. Which, obviously, Alistair Campbell doesn't know his arsehole from his ear roll and is just against the Tories, as we already know. But I would expect the reason why these people have been elevated to the House of Lords is because of what they did surrounding Brexit and maybe a little bit to do with Jeremy Corbyn, but I expect not very much. We already know all of this bit up there, I'm not going to read it again. Former Tony Blair advisor Alistair Campbell told LBC that the appointments were purely a result of their contribution against ex-leader Jeremy Corbyn. He said, what we are seeing here, I'm afraid, is the normalisation in British politics of a level of corruption that we as a country have for years condemned in the countries of others. Which is a load of old bollocks, we already know the politicians are corrupt as fuck, let's be honest here. Use lot might try and make it look like you're not, but we ain't stupid, we know what you're like. You look at the Labour ones and think they were not there because of their contribution to Parliament, they're there for their contribution to Boris Johnson against Jeremy Corbyn, which just shows this guy's Boris derangement syndrome at the end of the day. He don't even really like Jeremy Corbyn that much, yet he's still willing to attack Boris Johnson simply because he can. But I will have to agree with him that Boris Johnson's picks for the House of Lords are rather fucked up in my opinion, so I do pass partially agree with him on that, but obviously the Corbinated chicken is a bit of a wanker, as we already know. Obviously newspaper owners, we don't need to go into that, a KGB sons or whatever the fuck that is, like I said, I don't agree with the people he's put in there, I don't agree with the House of Lords at all, as you already know, and the rest of it is essentially just him moaning about who's going in there, which I'm not going to bother covering in this video, I might actually make a separate video of me talking about every single person that has been elevated and my thoughts on it. You will have to let me know down in the comment section if you guys will be interested in that. But I think it's safe to say that the Corbinated Chicken running around screaming about how he didn't get his nominations and actually complaining to the committee that deals with this is rather funny and showing the level of salt coming out of him is just amazing. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr Verhofstadt against their empires and that is why Britain is leaving and it doesn't matter which language you use we are going and we are glad to be going we're off